Hello viewers, welcome to my channel ITJ Olympiads and AP Physics with Amparish. And uh, today I have brought uh, a very commonly asked doubt from Pathfinder. It was also asked uh, to me by one of the students on Twitter. So I decided to do a video on this one. So without much ado, let me straight away get into the problem. Okay. So here's the problem. Uh, this is uh, check your understanding question number 15 from Pathfinder. Okay. So uh, what's the question? Two long conducting bars P and Q are fixed parallel to each other on a horizontal plane some distance apart. So this is bar P and this is bar Q. They are perfectly conducting and they are sep separated by some distance. Okay. Uh, two parallel jumpers J1 and J2 each of resistance R are arranged at separation X0 as shown in the figure. So this is one jumper and this is another jumper. So jumper you can just think of it as some sliding rod. Uh, through which current can pass and it can slide on the uh, long conducting rods. Okay, they are placed at separation x0. Initial separation is x0 as shown in the figure. The jumpers can slide on the bars without friction. Now, if a uniform vertical magnetic field of induction B is switched on, find the final separation between the jumpers. Now, we sw suddenly switch on a field B and we have to find out the what is the final separation between the two jumpers. Now, why the separation will change that you have to work out. You have to think how, uh, what's the mechanics, mechanics of it, what exactly is going on. So that I leave for you to think, okay. Uh, force between the jumpers due to their currents is negligible as compared to the force of interaction between the current in a jumper and magnetic field. See, so uh, this magnetic field and uh, this magnetic field and there will be some current in the jumper because of that there will be some force I L cross B. So what this statement means that this I, this current and this current their uh, mutual interaction can be ignored for solving the problem. Okay, if you want you can give it a try. Uh, I'll get into my analysis right away. So let me get into the analysis. So, uh, what's the concept here? See, uh, when you are switching on the magnetic field, the term switching on means that it's happening very fast. That means dB by dt uh, is tending to infinity. Uh, so, you have to assume almost sudden increase of current. Now, why is that significant? See, uh, the flux through this loop can increase because of two reasons. One is due to the change in magnetic field. And another is if these jumpers they start moving with some velocity then there then also the area of this loop also uh, keeps on changing. So there can be two sources of EMF. So you can say uh, the motional EMF and the one EMF due to B dot. Uh, now if it turns out if you want to solve the exact prob problem if you consider the B is varying slowly and uh, velocity is coming gradually then uh, that differ differential equation happens to be very difficult it goes into Bessel functions and all. But with some approximation or you can say appropriate assumptions, we can make things very easy. Uh, so what we can assume is that during the process when magnetic field is being switched on suddenly, the, the EMF due to the changing magnetic field is very, very large as compared to the motional EMF in these rods. Because as the magnetic field is changing, there is some motional EMF, I mean, there is some current flowing through these wires. And because of that currency, uh, you know that V cross B dot DL uh, is the emotional EMF. So because of the current, there's some small velocity. Uh, I mean, not maybe, maybe not so small velocity, but some velocity will be there in these jumpers during the process of increasing magnetic field. But then V cross B dot DL integral, you can assume that that EMF is much, much smaller during the switching on process as compared to the uh, EMF due to the changing magnetic field. Okay. So so that's what I've written during the switching process dB by dt is very large and therefore motional EMF during this time may be ignored in comparison to dB by dt. Of course, if B were given to be some time function, then the, these two cannot be ignored. Okay. I mean, they'll be comparable and uh, the differential equation will be very, very complicated. I saw using Mathematica goes into Bessel functions. Okay. However, after B steady B is achieved, there will be motional EMF causing the reduction of velocity that was obtained immediately after switching of the field. So uh, switching on the field. Okay. So once this field is switched on and it attains a certain such steady value at that time, you'll find that these jumpers will have some velocity and that velocity uh, will change with time. Uh, okay. So uh, we'll see how that will change. Because what will be the cause of that? Because there's motional EMF and according to Lenz law, the cause of motional EMF is rods coming together or maybe they'll be going out uh, that we can see. So, uh, uh, but in any case, whatever is the direction of velocity that will have to be opposed uh, by Lenz law. Okay. So now let's talk about EMF uh, during the switching on process. So EMF is d phi by dt 
initial separation is x naught and let us say rate of change of magnetic field is d dot. Uh, although magnetic field is switched on suddenly but we can assume that this very small interval dt in which there is some kind of increase in magnetic field and here I am talking about that b dot is the rate of change of field duty during that infinitesimal interval of time where uh, b is growing okay. So in any case I can write emf is minus b dot x naught into l d phi by dt because uh, magnetic field I mean flux is b into area and area is x naught into l right and what will be the force then force is i l uh, b so the force will be what uh, now i is emf divided by resistance so emf in the loop divided by resistance this is r resistance this is also r so total resistance of the loop is 2r so uh, e by 2r is the current and lb comes as it is and uh, I, then i substitute for e so this is the force that i get okay and this is a negative sign okay so shown direction the negative sign signifies that it's opposite to the shown direction okay so uh, this is the now I have done something uh, very carefully here see b into b dot that is b into db by dt that is nothing but see uh, b into db by dt you can always write it as what it is equal to d by dt of b square and into 1 by 2 why because if you take the derivative of b square it becomes 2b db by dt right and to cancel that too you put a half okay so that's what i have done instead of bb dot, dot i have written what uh, b square and uh, taken a 2 so this 2r becomes a 4r and this becomes derivative of b square so it becomes a perfect differential right and uh, impulse then is simply you take dt to this side so you get the impulse of the magnetic forces integral f dt that is minus x naught l square b square by 4r okay so impulse comes out to be negative that means uh, the ve velocity of these rods will be inverse right okay so this is our impulse and inward velocity of both jumpers after this impulse will be what you divide the impulse by mass so you get b square l square x naught by 4mr so this is the scenario immediately after the switching the magnetic field okay so this is the scenario okay uh, so v naught v naught velocity inwards and initial separation x naught and x i am calling a separation at general instant of time okay i did not bother to make a fresh figure but you can think x is at a general time and x naught is the uh, separation immediately after uh, switching on the field okay now again uh, let me start the clock again and uh, now um, again i can write emf uh, flux as uh, flex flux i can write now as b into l into x instantaneous flux and now b is a constant so d phi by dt is simply my uh, my uh, emf is minus d phi by dt so that is minus bl into dx by dt okay and then current again uh, emf divided by resistance so this becomes minus bl by 2r into dx by dt just divided this by the resistance of the loop which is 2r okay so the emf and uh, from emf i get current and from current multiply another lb so this becomes your force okay and now this force must be equal to what this should be equal to mass times acceleration right uh, so but think uh, actually the if you consider the coordinate of this uh, jumper from the midline uh, this will be actually x by 2 so its acceleration is what uh, it's not d square x by dt square but it's half d square x by dt square why because x is the uh, separation between the rods and both rods are moving uh, symmetrically so d square x by dt square is nothing but acceleration of this plus acceleration of this and therefore individual acceleration will be half d square x by dt square i hope you understood why i have taken half d square x by dt square you can easily think if i take x uh, i mean the, the coordinate from the midline then instead of x it would be let's say if it, this is y then this becomes y is x by 2 so that's why half d square x by dt square right okay so this is your uh, force and now uh, uh, now what i can do see uh, i i'm just rearranging this equation so dx by dt is nothing but v and d square x by dt square is v dv by dx i'm calling dx by dt as v please note dx by dt is not the velocity of the jumper dx by dt is rate of change of this distance right so dx by dt I have written as v and d square x by dt square I have written as v dv by dx. Now cancel of v on both sides. Now it's a simple differential equation. We just need to integrate this. Okay. So I know that at uh, uh, so what's the initial value of v? So v is what? V is dx by dt and initial value you see uh, initial velocity is v naught v naught. So dx by dt initial is minus two v naught. So that's what I have written. It is initial value is minus two v naught. And finally, when they are at steady state separation, final relative velocity becomes zero. So minus two v naught to zero over here, and here uh, from x naught to x. And now I've just put, uh, integrated this and substituted for v naught uh, which I had found here. 
so substitute this and uh, after integrating so then uh, a little bit of simplification uh, just substitute b naught over here and integrate this and you get the final answer and that comes out to be x is equal to x naught by 2 okay so uh, we are happy we got the final answer and uh, this matches with the answer given in the book so uh, be happy <laughs> In fact, uh, many times student com students commit silly mistakes. This question is very much prone to silly mistakes. So uh, definitely you should feel happy if you get the right answer. Okay, and that's my analysis for this video. Hope you enjoyed uh, this problem. And if you enjoyed this problem, uh, uh, please do uh, give it a thumbs up and uh, please share this video with your friends uh, as much as possible through uh, WhatsApp or Telegram or Discord servers or whatever medium you use for networking with your fellow students uh, preparing for IITJ or Olympiads and uh, um, mo and most importantly if you're not already subscribed to my channel please do subscribe to my channel because that's the main motivation for me that's what keeps me motivated to bring out a new video for all of you every day and uh, thanks a lot for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one and as always God bless you all thank you